We spoke in season one of the evolution of fintech over the past 100, 150 years. An evolution of digitization of finance, of building of infrastructure over an extended period of time, from the laying of the first transatlantic telegraph cable in 1867, up to the first ATM machine and the first handheld calculator in 1967, marking the beginning of a phase of FinTech 2.0. What was FinTech 2.0 about? It was about digitizing the traditional financial services industry. Payment systems like SWIFT or real-time gross settlement systems. Stock exchanges, the creation of NASDAQ, the digitization of securities markets, of pretty much every aspect of finance. FinTech 3.0, beginning with 2007-2008. What happens in 2007-2008? Well, first, the launch of the mobile phone. Not just the mobile phone, but the first iPhone. A smartphone that has transformed the way that we all interact with the world. Second, the launch of a telephone-based payment service in Kenya called M-Pesa that triggered a fundamental change in the way that billions of people across the world interact with financial services. Third, the 2008 global financial crisis, which through its new regulatory frameworks, changed the way that the financial sector operates and incentivized many people across the industry to move into new fintech startups to try to disrupt and compete with traditional financial services firms. And of course, in 2008 and 2009, the original Bitcoin white paper from uh, Satoshi Nakamura uh, and the launch of Bitcoin fundamentally beginning this trend of decentralization of finance. And so what is FinTech 3.0 about? FinTech 3.0 is all about new technologies, new entrants, and the transformation of finance. 2019, with the launch of Facebook's proposal for the first global stablecoin, Libra, along with the designation of Ant Financial in China as a systemically important financial institution, a too big to fail financial institution, marks the beginning of FinTech 4.0. What is FinTech 4.0 all about? It's about platforms. It is about scale. It is about mass finance, combining finance and big tech. It's not about small new entrants. It's about disruption. It's about existential change. The entrance of big players like Facebook, like Google, like Amazon, Apple, Ant, Tencent, Ping on and others that have fundamentally transformed finance. And as I highlighted at the beginning of this series, when we look at the implications of the COVID-19 pandemic for finance, we can say digitization, we can say electronic payments and central bank digital currencies. We can think of reg tech and soup tech. We can think of market integrity and AML systems. And we can also think about this scaling, the platformization of finance. And what we see in both finance and in technology are what we think of as network effects, economies of scope, economies of scale coming together, which means that the more you have from a data standpoint, the more you can do and the more advantages you have. What we often characterize as a winner takes all or a winner takes most outcome. And what this naturally means is a concentration, a dominance of markets by individual platforms. And so we have just released a series of papers working with a UN task force looking at global digital financial governance and how we can think about reforming regulatory systems to both take into account the tremendous benefits in terms of sustainable development, financial inclusion, economic growth and development coming from digital platforms. The benefits that we've seen from an M-Pesa or an Ant. But at the same time, 
trying to take into account the risks. The risks from the standpoint of what we call tech risk, cybersecurity risks, the risks uh, of market dominance, the risk of new infrastructures, and thinking about how can we build a governance system that thinks best about how to deal with this balancing of the positives and negatives of digital finance platforms. And I think going ahead, one of the biggest challenges for societies all over the world is going to be structuring regulatory and policy systems to take advantage of the benefits of platforms, of network effects, of scope and scale in data and technology, while at the same time trying to minimize those risks. And what this means is thinking about these in every policy decision when we are thinking about finance. The good sides, the bad sides, and trying to take a variety of different regulatory approaches from financial regulation, competition, antitrust, and technology regulation to try to achieve the best outcomes going forward. Because at the end of the day, what you really don't want is a situation where winner takes all. Why? Because everyone else loses. And that, at the end of the day, is not balanced sustainable development.